What is going on guys? My name is Moto and today you're going to be watching Squadcast episode number 4 here today on my channel. Uh, and today's topics are going to be kind of the post-race recap for Anaheim 2, as well as Glendale predictions, uh, speculations, our thoughts on the Triple Crown and all that stuff. But before we get started real quick, I wanted to shout out 1UP Motorsports and Dirt Munch, Dirt Monkey Productions, not Dirt Munchy. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, but they are the sponsor of the show today, and uh, we're going to get this started, okay? We're going to get this show on the road. You see Bucket there? Uh, we got Bucket, 1UP, and I, uh, as we're doing this a little bit early on Tuesday, uh, just because we felt like, why not? I mean, might as well get this knocked out. Uh, I think all of us had kind of weird schedules for today, so uh, without further ado, if oh, you can... Oh, shit, there's a bike coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, one up. Where'd you learn how to ride, Blake Baggett? <laughs> oh, was there no rider with that? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> yeah, I definitely looped it. <laughs> uh, Alrighty, guys. So, real quick, if you guys don't already follow the sponsors, down below I'm going to link those guys in the description. I'm going to link the Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff. So, if you do want to do that, go and show some love to our sponsors and all that good stuff. So, let's jump right into it. Uh, kind of going to do a quick recap of Anaheim number two with the Triple Crown results, uh, starting with the 250s. Uh, the race winners were Savachi, then McElrath, then Savachi again. Uh, notably, uh, I remember specifically that Pro Circuit Cowie kind of took over that top two uh, early in the race, or kind of mid-race, I don't even know if it was early. Uh, and, and took it from Geico Honda, which is really cool, and like the power play moves. It, it always seems like a shift in tide where a certain team just starts taking over, and you can just tell Pro Circuit Kawi is really dominant this year, and they're back on top. They've got a really stacked set of riders on this side with Pinturello and Spachi. I don't know about you guys, but I'm liking the 250s. I'm liking it. Pro yeah. Circuit. Well, I'm glad to see them good. They've had a rough few years, it seems like. Oh, yeah. Especially with Savachi losing the championships last round last year. And the, especially the fashion he did and where he just died. <laughs> that they was had one championship last year. Oh, uh, they did. Yeah, they did they, have they, Hill, but who the fuck dominant. is that? <laughs> they're not as dominant as they have been in the past. The last couple of years, they've just kind of been. Yeah. And I feel like that goes good to, riders, uh, but... I think that goes to AC kind of being gone, because AC is pretty much, if you think about it, even though Savachi has, has almost gotten the championship, I believe, twice now, he is still, like, he's not the biggest name on that team. Adam Cincerillo is easily the biggest name on that team still. Even, I mean, Forkner's kind of taking that AC spot. Uh, Davalos, I think, feel like, is even a bigger name than... Uh, than Savachi. I feel like Savachi is like the lowest name on the totem pole. But, I mean, I think that overall their lineups have been really, really kind of slim uh, with AC being out and then, uh, you know, Savachi kind of being the big big guy in the team pretty much. With, uh, I think when he was battling Cooper Webb, like he, he was the only Cowie really in the battle. Like every other team was there besides besides him, so it was, uh, it was a little bit weird. So I'm, I am also excited about the fact that Pro Circuit and Mitch Payton is back on top. So, very good to see that. Um, also, still on that AC hype train, I don't know about you guys. That is, that is my hype train. AC all the way. Bucket, well, bu bucket who's three. Our, three. You yes, won. Dude. Who's our points leader right now? Points leader is tied with, I believe, McElrath and Savachi. So they'll have another kind of situation as they did last year on the East Coast, where McElrath and Savachi were tied for points. So, uh, hmm. it's How many really rounds left? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. It's only three rounds in, so I mean, they still got yeah. a good amount to go. I'd say they got about five, six. Yeah. Yeah, six rounds probably about. That makes sense. Gonna, Plus they got the East West shootout. So that'll be really interesting. I don't, I, it doesn't really matter to me. I guess I don't have a, a horse in the race, I guess you would say. I just want to see a good championship comes down to the wire, man. So I, I feel for. like this coast really has that. I, you think about it. 
you have oh, McElrath, was it, with the uh, with the red plate right off the bat, and then it went to Plessinger, and then now it's back on McElrath, but you also have Sabachi. Sabachi, I don't even think, yeah. I think he was just top five at A1, just top five in Houston, so, well, not Houston, he kind of came back, but, I mean, he really wasn't too mm -hmm. crazy in the champion. And there's and still a couple uh, people I think they have potential of winning races too. Oh, Oldenburg, I think Sexton. he can win a race. Sexton, yeah. And Cirillo, if he stops fucking win. looping it every goddamn race. <laughs> I think we'll probably see Hill come back around in these later oh. rounds too. I can see Hill hard. coming back, but I don't even know who the fuck that is. He's won a championship. <laughs> No, I'm just oh, playing. Man. For those Come of you guys now. who don't get the joke, basically, it's, we're just, I, yeah, I'm joking about the fact that he sisters. really has not performed with this. It's kind of, uh, kind of unfortunate. I see him doing that. I, I really do believe, though, uh, one around. thing that the AC needs to do, going back to the AC hive train, he needs to start, he needs to stop riding like Roxon did last year. He needs to stop. He just needs to ride. I feel like, I mean, at times... He is what are you talking about? Roxon didn't ride last year. But you know what I mean, the intensity he did right off the bat, and how kind of in A2 he was going for it, even though he died. I mean, he yeah. was really pushing over his head and made one mi minor mistake, and I think that those minor mistakes are really costing it. I feel like, you know, if he just starts it, riding... It may not even be as much as a mistake, it's just a wrong uh, lip. Yeah, lip that was... really causes that kind of eject, I think. Oh yeah. Well, and I mean, yeah, even that then, was just a, that was just an early. For sure. But it, yeah. even then, I it's mean, like, like he, it just seems like, and he, I think even he's saying, like, he feels as though he may be pushing a little bit too hard at times, and he just needs to kind of just relax, because he almost, like, it's clear almost every fucking race, it seems like he is the fastest guy on the track, like, undeniably. In qualifying, he's always top three. I don't think he's qualified out of top three yet, and it's just, it's just wild to see that. This dude has not won the race yet, and I think that may be one of the reasons he's riding a little bit over his head. You know, it's, it's, it's hindering him, but at the same time, like there's so much potential for that. I, like he needs. I just want him to hit this fucking title. Like I really want him to get the title. He'll get it yeah. together. If we were picking for 250s, I'd probably almost go with him this weekend. His time's coming. Oh, for sure. He's going to put it all together. Well, and shit, the way he rides, I think this track could suit him. Like, I feel like he is one of those guys that with the big shit, like, he, he's almost like one of those guys you're, where where all the riders are like, well, is this guy going to hit this rhythm? Is he going to hit this? Oh, I've seen the track map today. That thing is wicked. I oh, can't sure. wait to see it on, on race day. It's going to be amazing. It, it looks really good. I think it looks a little bit more basic than this year's, just because of the fact that it does not have the fucking tunnel. But I don't know. It looks it looks pretty interesting. I think it's growing. Uh, I guess moving yeah, on from the 250s, then we'll move into the 450s. Any last things to say there, real quick? Nah. Alrighty. Yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. So moving on to the bird. Uh, well, yeah, fucking oh, Oldenburg. Yeah. Oldenburg's got so much potential. Anyway, anyway, getting away from the 250s. Uh, going into the 450 results, you had Moto 1 winner of uh, Cole Seeley, then Tomac, and Anderson. Lots Cole of really Seeley. good battles here. Um, big notable story uh, that I noticed that really kind of put a lot of people out of the, uh, out of at least the first race was the uh, crash with Mookie and Brock Tickle over the face of the triple. I don't know who else was like kind of involved. Ooh, they, yeah, I don't think they showed a replay. A lot of people that got all hung up. I know Anderson did. Uh, it's, oh, it seemed like the top six people? was the only group of people that did not get caught in that. What Everybody about main else two? Main that two was is insane. gnarly. Pike main going over good. Freezy. Oh yeah. Oh man, that was gnarly. <laughs> and then uh, you also yeah. had the the notable battles, I believe, between Anderson and was it Brayton? Anderson and Brayton for third. Yeah. And then, uh, Seely was trying to come back at Tomac there and then just made a minor mistake. Other than that, I mean, fucking yeah. phenomenal battles all through that kind of Kind of reeled the name, actually. Oh, I think if he would not have made that mistake, Tomax would not have gotten the overall. He really would have won the race. He really yeah. would have won the race and it would have been uh, a done overall. Like, there's no way. 1-1, one, one, like, 4 or some shit, that would have been overall wrapped. 100%. So. 
Uh, with that, we move on to main three, I guess, and that was... I, I honestly can say I didn't pay too much attention to it, just because... Now, do you have to go get food know. again? Yeah. No, I did not have to go get food. Even though that probably would have been really nice. Uh, I was just, I, I had so much shit. I was watching uh, UFC, Bellator, and Supercross all at the same time. Kind of a lot of random shit going on uh, in the house. Um, but I know Tomac was leading for a good amount of time, and then out of nowhere you see the red plate of Anderson just fucking rip past him and oh, drop oh, that his was ass. awesome. That was awesome to see. Like he, he kind of stood him up and... And he just, he left. He's like, this is not, Houston was not a fluke. Like, these two races that we've done, me getting these top positions, like, this is not a fucking fluke. Like, this is going to happen every weekend, and you better be ready for it. You know? Hell yeah. I'm excited the to see Anderson break. do this, finally. It's, it's uh, long oh, deserved. I feel like, uh, at the same time, even though, you know, he's on a Husky, I feel like he was kind of also being held back a little bit by Dungey, noting they were training partners. And, and you know... They, uh, it no, may I not be he's as really much, lacking but a good start. I think that as well. I agree. Yeah. But maybe it's these gates that are separating, making the starts even like they're supposed to. I like that maybe. idea too, man. Those fucking starts really know. are helping a lot of people, and it, I feel like those are even shaking up the uh, the results a little more. It seems like uh, cool. it's really helping Pike out. I think because even though Pike have, has been a decent starter, I think he's gotten a lot more confidence. So he's just getting out Hell to the yeah. fucking front and just being able to hold because he's like, oh shit, I just kicked everybody's ass off this like Michael Lessie used to do, and I'm not going to drop like <laughs> that, man. I'm going to fucking stay Hell right yeah. here. I mean, eventually he drops just because I think, you know, he's got a shit ton of speed, but he's just not got that, that race so, craft to stay there. There was five different main event winners and six mains? Yep. Five main event winners, six mains. Yeah, uh, yeah. Technically, it would be two for 250s and than uh, three for the 450s, yeah. which is what three we want to see, honest to God. I'm, I'm, oh, man. If I'm watching it a Triple racy. Crown, I don't want it to be a Monster Million situation. I want it to be who the fuck is going to win this one. Like, I want it to be that competitive. It was, it was very nice. That, that was how it ended up. I will say uh, I, I'm fine with the Savachi winning because it looked like it was a good battle between him and Cinturillo for that last race win. Um, yeah. So what was the difference? Like point zero two seconds or some shit like that between oh, them? Since I was on it around those last couple corners too. He wanted it. One more lap, he would he would have he would have had it. Sure, one more lap. Um, this is good racing overall. I I personally couple commercial fuck ups. I don't know what that was all oh about. Oh my god! Did you see that too? They started up oh, the yeah, fucking they... one of the the mo I think it was the four fifty main number one. <laughs> And out of nowhere, it cuts to a Suzuki commercial. Halfway through the Suzuki commercial, it fucked right off and Goes went straight back to the, back to the racing. <laughs> and I think it also happened during the end of one of the mains. They were showing, like, the battle yeah. for, like, third and second or fourth. And yeah. Nope, commercial time. It's like, what are you guys doing in that trailer? <laughs> oh, like, my God. It's just, uh, I think they got to get the work, the, the bugs worked out. Uh, with that, uh, I guess we can wrap that whole discussion up. What are you guys' thoughts overall on the Triple Crown? Do you like it? Do you think it should go? Do you think it should stay? Do you think it should be a Monster Cup only event and Monster Energy, or um, MX and Nations, I should say? Just stay like yeah, that. Yeah, Monster Cup only. I don't know. Good racing. Very good racing. I was very happy with how that panned out, but the, the fact that they don't really announce or have any way of tracking who the top guys are and their overalls throughout the night, it, it makes it very hard to follow oh, one of six races. I, I will say, I think that's another critique that I will have, is that I think we talked about that in a live stream on Saturday. Uh, so that night, actually, I guess it was morning for a lot of people, but, I mean, that night we were talking about how, like, overall, it was, it was solid racing, intense racing, but... One of the big things was that we had no fucking idea who the overall like leader was at the time. Cause, you know, in Not a fucking they showed it after the race. Yeah, and in a main event normally <laughs> yeah. for a race, you know who's in the points or who's getting first place. Like that's clear because they're in first place. They get they, I mean, you can just tell whoever's in the lead of the race is in first place. But with the triple crowns, 
first place could be in like fifth place and you have no fucking idea. In, in yeah. the way these positions work, you could be like, oh my god, this guy's gonna get the overall. I think I even was texting the group chat like, yes, Cincerillo's gonna fucking get the overall. This is sick. Sweet, Cincerillo points lead here. And then he turns out to not even be in any way to get to the points lead. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I thought it was sick, but man, it really fucked my fantasy points. Oh my god, oh, yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> Ken Roxon in the fucking like... wild card? What? Yeah, yeah, there's some, yeah, there's some good racing though. I'm not gonna complain about it. Three rounds a year, you know. I think it's good for fans, so, I oh, mean, yeah. I don't care either way. I, I enjoy both of them, but I do, I prefer it, you know, the, the normal way. Oh, for sure. And I, I have to agree, I, I did enjoy it. Uh, I will say I'm happy that that's not the format for the entire season, uh, as the riders are as well. Uh, I don't think yeah, I can handle that, that kind of shit that for a whole fucking season just watching, because, I mean, loved it, but, like, that kind of racing is so, like, it's, it's almost too much if you have too much of that kind of racing. Basically. The way this season is panning out anyway, it's almost... It's almost like we're we're pretty much getting minor versions of that every single weekend. Ah so. oh, man. Overall, I'd, I'd say I like the format. I will say fine tune it, give us a little more information, so that way we can be a little bit more sane about what's going on and you know, what the fuck is happening. And, uh, other than that, I don't really have anything else to, to critique it with. Any, any other thoughts on it? No, no, nah, man. I think you nailed it. Alrighty, well, to move away from that, we can move into our picks, and uh, for this week, guys, it is going to be top six, uh, instead of top five, just because the wild card is six to position, so uh, which one of you guys wants to start this off? Yeah, I'll start it off. Alrighty. You up one up? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, you're up. So, I got Eli Tomac getting first. Anderson second, Seeley third, Roxon fourth, Brayton fifth, and Mushkin in sixth. Not bad, not bad. I like that. And uh, one of the big things I think I was talking about before the video is that one of the big determining factors, even though Moosquid is very fast, generally, uh, Glendale is known for fat fucking like, not necessarily insane. Like, they're super cross loose, but they're a lot more built up than normal, from what I'm remembering. Yeah. Like, they're big well, whoop. And that's well, I not heard as they had, uh, I heard they had pretty big whoops last weekend, and they got shot down Friday evening. That would probably be what I've been sense. hearing. They, like, took them down to half the size. They were gnarly. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I hope think, they're not trying uh, to tame these tracks out for some reason. Oh, hell no. I think uh, at least them. this weekend at Glendale, they're going to keep Those students probably paying them off to make the whoops easier. Probably. That or Dungy is so he can fucking <laughs> make moves and feel better for pulling off last year. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. <laughs> but, uh, so, so sorry, run, run that down one more time for me. I know you had Eli Tomac, then who? Anderson... Seeley, Roxon, Brayton, and Ruskin. Not bad. I will say, uh, to kind of go on another point about the track, this is an Eli Tomac track. Glendale has always been a big, like, with the way the stadium is, Tomac has always been really, really good here. At least the, the times, I think he has he only run it one time. I feel like he's only run it once just because of the fact that his shoulder is. Maybe not. I don't know. But, I mean, noting that he's a really good long track guy and, and he's shown that he's very quick in supercross it's just the perfect kind of hybrid queen and that's really going to help him out so with that you also have anderson very good choice because he's clearly on fire this season uh Sealy's a good choice because he's on fire as well i think he's doing stupid good uh you have roxon and brayton brayton is a big big surprise for a lot of people uh noting i believe he got fourth overall in this, the, the last week's race, or in the Anaheim 2. Um, he was just running good on ice, right? and, and I think he's really yeah. trying to run. I think he was finally able to have those battles with Steely. I think Connor was talking about that the other day. And uh, it, it's really good to see that he, he's running again and he's on a good good zone. So, uh, with that, well, I guess. The, uh, on the Brayton 
side note, I mean, he did come into racing late, and I was watching a little interview with him the other day, and he was just saying that he feels like he's like just getting to his prime because he did start so late. Yeah, he's getting older, but he's he started way later than most people. He's, his body's not as used up. <laughs> That's yeah. accurate. That is accurate. So I guess moving on from that bucket, what are your picks then? Oh me, me, yeah. Um first place gotta keep rolling with El Hombre. Uh Tomac second, Rocks in third, Barsha. Bam bam last weekend was exciting. Oh, he took Reed off the track damn near. <laughs> and took himself off the track, trying to get around Reed. <laughs> Uh, Sealy fifth and Brayton bringing it up in the wild card. Not bad, not bad. I uh, I I have to say, I'm I'm thinking a lot of people are gonna think, oh well, fucking, we've seen this out of Barsha. He's gonna have his good two performances, and now he's gonna fall back because he's gonna go back to the old Barsha. I think, honest to God, it was just A2 is one of those weekends. Just like for Roxon, how he finished in ninth, and how Moosequid finished in like 83rd or some shit. I mean, it's just one of those weekends, and the way the format was, it's a little bit difficult, and the competition was just on higher. I, I do think it is a safe bet putting him back in that top five, even though he didn't perform this past weekend. This is the way the format was. He's going to be coming back oh, yeah. swinging. Cause, uh, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure they've signed him. Like anybody, Has anybody gotten word on if he's signed for a full-year contract now with Yamaha, or is he still fighting for that? I have not. Because if Yamaha is educated, nice. Cooper Webb's clearly so fast this year, it's not even funny performing in constant top Cooper fives. Cooper Webb didn't do too bad over the weekend, did he? No, he actually did perform pretty decent. I think he got a top ten, but... I mean, I think Marsha did as well. Yeah, and, and the thing was, I mean, going into the season, we talked about it. Cooper Webb's supposed to be this fast fucking dude this year. Like, he's happy with the bike, blah, blah, blah. They said, uh, I guess this weekend after him performing like dog shit, the, the weekend prior, and, and, and I do say dog shit just because of the hype, we can kind of say uh, didn't live up, but uh, they said apparently they changed out a shit ton of the, like the, uh, the settings for his bike, kind of changed out the feel and all that, so that way he could feel a little more comfortable, and he did perform a little better, but I think that might have also been a bit due to the fact that the, uh, the format was a little different, so that may have been the case right then and there. No. Has he got off the gate decent in a main yet at all? I don't no. know. I think he got off the gate decently in Houston, but I only say decent. Like, not Well, he not hasn't well. even qualified good, has he? No, uh, uh, he's qualified top like 10, I think, I mean, twice. top 10, I mean, that's good, but not where he's supposed to be at. Not when Barsha is a fucking rider that's just coming off, like, three weeks of eating cheeseburgers and fucking donuts in Paris for... <laughs> For three weeks, and then coming in and getting on the bike for two, and then r outrunning him every qualifying since. Since he's been on the team, he should be a little bit. I feel like Cooper Webb should be a little better. But I think we've got the old Barsha back, and that's fucking awesome. The old Barsha oh, is, man. is ridiculous. Just wait till he primes out. Because <laughs> keep in mind, with that being said, he's he's only he's like fresh on that bike still, even though he's well, dialed. Ooh. Guess what the old Barsha is going to bring out? Bam Bam. Hell yeah. Gonna People are gonna, he's going to the fucking sport. bodies are going to start hitting the goddamn if... floor. People are going to start taking rocks to the goddamn <laughs> cocks. <laughs> I wonder if part of Barsha's deal is he gets so wrapped up in trying to test and all this other stuff where he just hops on his bike and just fucking rides it. Maybe that has something to do with him doing good. I think that might be as well. Like Maybe he gets lost in the settings and can't ever find a good happy medium because he's Spends too much and well, time maybe on it. he finds that medium, but he doesn't. Per he thinks, oh, well, this is this is just the beginning. If I found it and it feels this comfortable, we can make it ten times more. And he, and he gets so yeah. far gone that it, there is no return. You know what I mean? That 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 would or make maybe sense. Maybe he I didn't have that. a lot of say in his settings, and now he does. That as well. Well, you yeah. never know. Behind the scenes, for sure. Yeah. But I, I personally just hope that he does get picked up for the full season. Is he? I, I don't He's see the how they can shit their on them and shit. not. And honestly, it could even be the, the team atmosphere. I mean, maybe he wasn't... Maybe he didn't jive well with everybody at JGR. I don't and know. Who was with him? Wasn't it Brayton? I thought it was Barsha Brayton. 
Uh, he was... Was Barsha is something. I mean, there's a lot of people, and then... Oh, Barsha Pike as well with JGR. Yeah. You got... I mean, and, and he apparently got a brand new mechanic, too. That, that dude that he used to be with, I guess, is no longer his mechanic. So maybe that may have something to do with it. Maybe it's just... Jesus Christ, one up trying to take me yeah. off the fucking Narnia there. Anyway, maybe that might be the reason. But Barsha is definitely a really solid pick, and I'm happy that he's back, so... I guess uh, moving on into my pick, uh, I do end up having Eli Tomac as well in the lead for the win, uh, and then I do have Ken Roxon in second, just because, man, he's, I mean, I think Houston, he was taking a chill pill, and he's like, I'm in second, I don't need to go push for this W, I, I, I don't need to go risk hurting my arm anymore. I, I don't want to sit there and push too hard. If I can keep this second place, it's not that big of a deal. That's still a lot of points. And then I think A2, just bad weekend. I think he's going to come back and, and run really, really hard. He's been getting really good starts. And I think that's the, one of the big keys to him as well as Tomac. Good starts equals good finish. So I think that's that's really key. Uh, then I have Anderson in third. El Hombre is just fucking on fire. Like, it's no doubt. This dude is here to win this title and he's he's not going to let Musquin outshine him in the training camp and and all this shit even even if he's supposed to be the breakout he's not he's not going down without a fight clearly Musquin's Musquin's in the title there is nobody really out of the title um I know we've I think I've rolled out uh Tomac in the past podcast kind of talking about uh, he's just, he's 49 out. How is he going to be able to get back? I mean, the deficit last year was 29. Now that it was 40, and it was 49. That's 20 more. And he was only going to be up, if he won the next couple of races, the way Dungey was finishing, he was only going to be up like 8 points or 9 points in the finish. So, a little bit weird there, but uh, El Hombre is just fucking running shit. So I have him there in third. And then I end up putting Cole Seeley in fourth as well. He was just on it, man. He is fucking running shit. Uh, real determined. Uh, got Bam Bam in fifth, and then Marvin Moosquid. That man is in sixth place. I just think, again, the whoops are really going to be the downfall this weekend. And maybe he's still going to nurse his shoulder up a little bit and try to just and, uh, nurse it on Push home. Push through. Mm -hmm. Push through it and get home, yeah. Just salve some points. Hell yeah. Oh. Those enough. are my off then. <laughs> uh, also, ooh, thinking about pulling off, uh, I know he did pull off last weekend, but somebody else that pulled off was uh, Dean Wilson. We didn't talk about this. Uh, a lot of people were asking kind of why he pulled off in the uh, live stream and uh, all of that good stuff afterwards. Uh, it turns out he actually lost a foot peg on his brake side, so it had been a right foot peg. And uh, oh, for yeah. those of you guys who don't really understand that context and how shitty that is to ride without a foot peg, uh, it's like walking without your foot. Yeah. So that may <laughs> seem really radical, but I want you guys, if you don't believe that, to go on ahead and go out and r just take off your right foot peg and go out and ride a lap on a fucking competitive track full bore. Go do that. Go hit a, a go hit a massive triple. Go hit the whoops. Do whatever. Because let's be section. real here. That's going to blow a lot of fucking dick. Okay? Plus, you got to keep in mind how balanced they have to stay on the bike at the speed they're going. They're, you know, their footing is everything. Part of that is obviously being on the foot peg that they're in the right spot. If he doesn't have a foot peg, one, balance is going to be off. Two, he's not going to have the fucking balance to begin with because of the fact that his shit is just gone. He doesn't have a foot peg. So that's why he pulled off. Kind of sucks. I think he was doing pretty decent, wasn't he? I don't. I don't really remember where he was. Yeah, I know he was top ten at least. No. Poor Dean Wilson. Love Dean Wilson. Dean Wilson. I want this how dude to have a good you, season. They, they, how the hell do you break a foot peg off? Uh, uh someone uh, T-boned him. him or something. Oh, no, gotcha, like bag gotcha. it or some shit, trying to get back at him from like the 2000s when he fucking cross jumped him in the national race or some shit. You know. <laughs> Anybody else remember that? We'll do a throwback moment. Yeah. You guys remember when he got cross jumped and they almost yeah. fought in the pits? That was fucking hilarious. Oh my god. But 
Anyway, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up our Anaheim 2 shit and the Glendale predictions. So I guess we can talk about the track and our thoughts on the championship, even though it's three rounds in. Is there any speculation on anybody who could be out of the championship? Anybody that's really going to, you think, is going to take off? I know we obviously think Anderson is going to start running. And if he gets that hot streak, he could turn out like Tomac did last year and just run shit. Yeah. But... Is there anybody else you're kind of looking at as like, this guy can take this title easy as shit, and he's just waiting. Like, this is, we, we don't see it, but he's there. I don't I, see I anyone running away with it. A little bit. He's, he's mentally struggling a little bit, and he even said he he's not riding how he needs to ride. And if he can figure that out, he's not far off the pace. Well, and then we keep in mind the Anderson whole rivalry with the 250s and even coming into the 450s. Like, the, he knows how to battle Jason Anderson. And yeah, he's let Jason Anderson get the better of him on multiple occasions. And at this point, I don't think if, if Healy and him are in a battle, he's not letting this fucking dude get, get another one up on him. I think, again, yeah. Healy is a very good choice for the championship. He, he's been just kind of sitting back, and I think he's getting fed up with it. Oh yeah. Oh, and real quick guys, if you guys are watching this far in, I want you guys to type in the chat after I say this point. Type in the chat something. Keyword. Okay boys, we're gonna do that again. That was fucking thick as fuck. I like that idea. Um, but if you guys don't know, kind of, and you kind of want to take our advice on the picks, I would just be warned that we do have quite a bit of change after qualifying. So. You guys are kind of taking what we're saying here is like, oh yeah, these guys know what the fuck they're talking about. You should definitely look at our RM Fantasy, because it is fucked, okay? We're garbage, too. Yeah. <laughs> we are trash at this, so if anything, you guys should make your picks based off of qualifying, because that's pretty much what we do. Uh, even though we'll have our speculation through the week, it's, 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 this championship is so fucking crazy, anything could happen. And the best determiner, I would say, would be wait for qualifying and all that stuff. We're not the gods that are getting literally every pick right at fucking Sunday at 1 o'clock in the morning because they're just gods and they know exactly what's happening. Like these motherfuckers that have flawless records so far because they predicted the outcome perfectly. Like, we're not those guys. We have, we have no fucking idea what we're doing, so. No. So with that, if you have made it this far into this podcast, squadcast, shenanigans deal, it's going to be Spongebob related again, okay boys? Ready for this? What? You ready for this? Keyword. Keyword is going to be hoopla. Okay? Type down hoopla in the chat if you have gone this far into the video. So anyway, moving on. Hoopla. Again, hoopla. Anyway. So. Hoopla. <laughs> With that said, uh, I guess I, I kind of want to talk about Glendale and, and the way that the track looks and get you guys' overall thoughts. Like I, Ooh, we touched Super on it a Cross little bit. Put it but... up today. I'm gonna pull that up. I like it. Oh yeah, if you guys haven't already seen the track map for it, Supercross has posted it uh, as a still picture and then the track walk, your Yamaha track walk on Instagram and Facebook, I believe. So go check that out. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts? You guys like the way the track works, or, or anything like that? Is it? Is, I I personally like it. I think I, we we touched on it, and I'll said we kind of like the way the track works. I think I like uh, it. it. It looks it looks sick. It looks, looks technical. It looks different. It, it's got that big long straightaway. I mean, uh, gnarly so whoops. A little sand section in there too, in the back corner. Yep. Is, yeah, uh, they got that. They got the corner table section there, right after the whole shot. Hell yeah! It's no. gonna be trickery. I'm excited for it, man. It looks really good, and, and and it, I like it a lot because of the fact that I I love the way that Indianapolis looked last year, and it has that kind of like weird jackknife. I don't know if it's jackknife, but it, it has that kind of jack vibe to it after the whole shot, where it kind of. It has the turn, but then it goes with the turn for the whole shot itself, like the the minor bend in it, and then it uh, goes back to the side of the stadium. Just looks really fucking cool, in my opinion. A lot of long sections. This is a football stadium, then, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is yeah, that massive we, one. Have they? Yeah. It's 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 big. I love it. It should uh, really really make the make the fast guys shine too. I think it'll be really. 
That's that's all I got really on the Glendale shit. I kind of w did want to talk about you guys' thoughts on Supercross the game though, as that is coming out soon. I think we've I don't know if we've really talked about it too much on the podcast, but I know a lot of the viewers, obviously since we're the the Moto Gaming channel, uh, we got a lot of people excited for both MX vs ATP All Out and then Monster Cross the game. But since uh, since we got a little bit more information on that with the track creator and trailers, physics changes, and all that stuff. What are you guys' overall thoughts and opinions? Are you guys excited? What, what have you looking forward to? A new Moto game. Yeah. Moto for life. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, uh, I hope it's good. Uh -huh. It should be good. It looks good, but I'm really looking forward to the next first ATV all out. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. Pre-order that. She is knit today. Definitely. Now, I will say, guys, uh, the one reason I do bring that up is because of the fact I want to let you guys know that your man already has a track design made, and all I have to do is copy and paste that from paper onto the track creator. And I think, honest to God, this track that I have in my fucking mind is going to be the best thing I ever did on. You can hit well, copy and paste create, from paper to the track creator? Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. If you fucking have... Oh, you have to download the whip it. glitch and feel like a motherfucking sorcerer wizard. Remember? Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. Alright. <laughs> but, uh, no. I, I just wanted to glitch, guys. say that for sure. Now, one thing as well, bringing up the Moto game. Hoopla. Uh, hoopla. Yeah, also Hoopla. Uh, so, for those of you guys who freaked out in the MX vs. ATV All Out trailer when they showed a certain whip in a stadium, I want you to look in front of me to the top of your screen where it says Reflex, Untamed, Alive, and Unleashed. Holy shit, guys. We're playing those games right now. Uh, so the big thing with that, guys, is that I think when you're seeing that, they're just paying tribute to the game. Plus, I believe that that Manchester that that stadium looks awful light, uh, awful lot like Manchester. Trump, like so that's probably why they had that. So I just wanted to clear that up, guys. A lot of people are like seeing that comment from me and they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Here? They have that in a lot of the states. Uh, so you guys are excited about the new game. That's what matters. I never even ever sat here, honestly. They got all these banners, all the old games. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah. And it's in a lot of stadiums. I think it's in two of the different stadiums. It's in the shorter stadium, just like this one, as well as the... Uh, there's another really short stadium like this one that... that I, I don't know. There's two short stadiums like this that have the band. So... I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the discussion. Is there anything else you guys wanted to touch on today? Anything else in Moto World that, that you guys were hearing about, or...? Hmm... Anything, really? No, go fucking El Hombre. There you go. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button again. Hoopla. Right, everybody? Hoopla. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, guys, if you liked the video, hit that like button. Comment down below you guys' picks, your predictions for Glendale, and your thoughts overall on the book round and the results from that. Uh, give me your thoughts, honest, uh, honest opinions on uh, the new games that are coming out and, and all that stuff. And uh, just to let you guys know, I guess we can announce this as well on here. We are going to have a live episode of Squadcast on what? the 14th. When? 14th of February. Did you not just hear him say 14th? Oh. 14th February. <laughs> yeah, 14th Hell of February. Yeah. So guess what, guys? We're not getting pussy that day. Yay! You want to know why we're not getting pussy that day? Because we're streaming on Valentine's Day. Fuck. It's all right. That's what right hands and left hands were made for. Anyway, guys. <laughs> so, anyway, guys. Uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We're going to be the number one news source and gameplay source for Monster Energy Supercross, the official game, as well as All Out. Uh, and we're going to be running some tournaments, which we are going to announce very soon. Very soon. We're in the works, okay? A Moto Open Invitational. Moto is on its Open way. Invitational. I like that. Hell yeah, man. It, and it looks nice. It's not. A, we're not going to call it a tournament. We're going to call it a championship. Because let's be real here. A tournament's fucking elimination. Shit. We don't do that. We're doing a championship. So. Fuck uh, yeah. Anyway, Never guys. Eliminated. That is pretty much going to be it from here. So, uh, Unless you're Connor. Yeah, unless you're Connor. 
Fucking liberal. <laughs> anyway, guys, my name is Moto. It's been Bucket and One Up as well. And we're out. Bow, chicka, 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 bow, bow, bow. Bye.